Have you had this happen to you before? As a photographer, you shoot a lot of photos and your collection becomes bigger and bigger over time and at some point you lose sight of all the photographs you've taken. This point is usually reached rather quickly, but as a photographer you, of course, simply continue to add more and more photographs to the collection. At some point you feel like doing something with them, so maybe you decide to share them online on Instagram. Or you go overboard and make a whole YouTube channel about it. <coughs> yeah. By sharing the photographs, you find a way to sort of make use of them, but this still doesn't prevent the fact that some photographs, as good as they might be, just disappear into the vastness of your gallery and you forget them. This happens to me all the time, and recently I had another moment of realisation that I've got a bunch of film photographs from last year that I actually would love to share but just somehow forgot. And so that is what this video is about. Today I want to share with you some photographs from almost forgotten roles of film. Alright, so I want to start off with some photographs from a trip I took back in September 2021. Melly and I decided to go on a spontaneous trip to Copenhagen to visit a friend and of course I had brought along my camera. In this case I brought along a Olympus XA3 with an expired roll of Kodak Gold, which was a little risky but I wasn't planning on doing any serious photography on this trip, I just thought I'd like to document a few things and I think an expired roll of film incentivizes you not to take the roll too seriously and not concentrate too much on the photography and just shoot pretty random shots. But I did get some which I think are pretty cool and worth showing and I haven't shown them yet so I thought I'd include them in this series. So we're starting off with this pair. On the left, this is, well, not exactly the most relevant photo I think. This is like the standard Copenhagen photo. Our friend that we were visiting described it pretty well. He said, this is the photo that you see when you Google Copenhagen. <laughs> and I think it's pretty accurate. You just Google it and you'll see exactly this view. Yeah, but I still wanted to include it because I thought it's like a nice establishing shot for this series. But there's not much more to say about it. I just wanted to include it for that reason. And then on the right, that is already a photo that I think is much cooler. We've got this very strong sense of leading lines and depth created through, well, the street and the buildings and all the lines that are just going towards the middle. And a little detail that I think is quite cool, it's a bit hard to see, I think, because it's very small, is that the group of people coming towards us, there was one person, she noticed that I was photographing them and she gave me like this walking smile which I thought was like really kind because some people maybe feel intimidated of me photographing them. I wasn't photographing them, I was photographing the street. But she noticed and decided to give a smile for the photo, which I thought was kind and funny. So that's a little nice add-on on the photo. And apart from that, I think in this photograph, the expired look of Kodak Gold is quite present, which I think is just because the film isn't very sensitive anymore. I did overexpose all of these photos by quite a bit actually, but obviously it didn't entirely work out. This one here is slightly underexposed in the shadows, but at least we got a little bit of detail in the sky, so the dynamic range isn't even too bad, and I think overall this photo looks really nice. And so overall, I just really like it for its documentative purpose of documenting the city that we were visiting and the vibe that it gives off. And also that it includes a lot of people because I think the people of a city are a very big part of its identity. And so that is included here and there's more of that coming up. So let's move on to the next page. On this page, let's start off with the left photo, which I think is great. I just love this photo. As you can see, it's this moment snapped. In Copenhagen, there were these funny parks which had these tiny holes. They're really small and they have this trampoline kind of function and you can just bounce around in them, which is really fun. And we were trying it out and Melly was having a bounce and I thought it'd be fun to get a photo of her. And it turned out perfectly, in my opinion. It's just this perfect moment of her being in the air. I wasn't expecting to like get exactly that, but it was a very pleasant surprise as I was scanning it and saw that I had gotten the perfect moment. So yeah, I got a little lucky here. And so this photo I like so much because, not just because it worked out, but also because it just represents this trip. It was a very spontaneous trip and we were just going there without much of a plan and just having fun. And I think this photo really represents this thing of we were just somewhere in Copenhagen, not at all some touristic area. And so we were just on this random street, found this park and we're having some fun there and just having a good time, which I think represents this trip very nicely. And therefore I quite like this photo. 
And the right photo is similar to the right photo from the last page, it's a documentation of the city. So we can see the buildings and we can see the people and also, as you can see, a lot of people riding their bicycle, which is also a big part of Copenhagen's identity, or generally those countries in the north, I think. Uh, Melly and I have been to Amsterdam before and it was very similar there that there were so many people riding their bike through the city. And similarly, the people here mostly just go around by riding their bike, which I think is really cool. And so this is a documentation of that. And there are just so many little details that you can appreciate here. So for example, the ground in the foreground, that's all these little tiles, which is a very European thing. And it just fits the overall scene here. I think this scene captures Copenhagen very nicely. I could have photographed any corner and some would represent the city better or worse. And I think in this case, it actually worked quite nicely, which is something I appreciate about this photo. Then let's move on to the next page. Here is just one photo. I wanted to show this photo on its own because I think it might be my favorite. I don't really know what it is, but something about this photo just is so pleasing to me. I don't, I can't quite explain it. So it's similar to the last couple of photos, just this documentation of the city, but in this case it worked so nicely because we've got this clear subject, which is this woman riding her bike right in the middle actually of the composition. And she is technically frozen, but I do still feel this movement of her. Maybe it's my memory, but I think if you look at this photo, you would also feel the dynamic of Copenhagen and how everything is moving. You can see the people walking on the side. On the other side, you can see people pushing their bikes. And then also here on the biking lane, there are people riding their bicycles. And again, we've got the buildings and there's actually a lot of like empty space in the sky, which usually either is wonderful or it doesn't work. But in this case, I, I don't really think anything about it, but something in this photo just really speaks to me. I just think it turned out so nicely, even though it's basically the same concept as the last two photos of the city that I showed you, this one stands out to me for some reason I can't really explain. So if you have any thoughts, I would really be interested in what you think, especially in comparison to the previous photos. I just know that I really like it. Moving on, here we have two more photos from the streets of Copenhagen and as you can see this was at sunset or maybe even just after sunset, I'm not quite sure, but it's getting a little dark. It was quite risky actually to shoot at these conditions with the Olympus and this expired roll of Kodak Gold, ISO 200, so not really much light. Actually, it worked out very nicely because as you can see in the left photo, we've got some motion blur, which in this case I really appreciate. And just for some context, I was riding the bicycle and the light had just turned green so we had to go but I had the camera in one hand and my bike and I was holding the bicycle in the other hand and just photographed like this therefore we I got quite a lot of shake in the photograph but I think it really works because it represents the scene or the moment that I was in I think we were back on our way to the accommodation actually and uh, but yeah it was a very you know, movement filled trip and day there's that one cyclist in the middle that just stands out to me, even though he isn't really bright like the guy to the left of him or the closest to the camera like Melly is. He's just somewhere in the middle, but for some reason he seems really striking to me, maybe because his shape is very clearly visible, maybe that's why, I don't know, but I almost feel like he is the subject of the photo, not Melly, even though my intention was actually to photograph Melly. But I suppose this coincidence turned out very nicely, and I really like this photo. It doesn't feel very calculated and therefore it feels very personal and very authentic and real in a sense. That is just a snap out of my memories from this trip, which I think comes across very nicely here. Then the right photo is from the same bike ride. As you can see, the light had turned red and Melly is right in front of this guy that was in front of me. Somehow, probably because I was holding my camera, I was slowing down on the bike. This guy overtook me at some point and so he was between Melly and me and we were waiting for the light to turn green and so I thought, huh, this might be my chance to get another photo. And so I got out the camera and thought, why not just get a shot of him and conveniently this person looked to his left. I don't know what he was looking at, but by looking to the left, we got a glance at his face. So if he were looking straight ahead, we would just get the back of his head, some hair, which probably would be underexposed and not even properly visible. But now we at least get to see the side of his face, which just gives this person some personality, this subject in the photograph. And I just love how he is in front of these two red lights, which give him a slight rim light. He really stands out in the photo very nicely. It's sort of a happy accident, actually. I think the look of this expired film just really suits the photography of a trip that is not about photography, but just about the trip itself. 
Then let's move on to a different series of photos. This is now back in Salzburg, August 2021, and I was testing out a roll of Lomography 800. You might remember that I posted a video of shooting Lomography 800 at night, and this is the same roll, so I just wanted to try it out and decided to go out during sunrise at some point. This is just a field not far from where I live, and on the left, this is one of the photos that I got that morning, one of the first ones. Something I appreciate here is that deer, or actually there are two, I think. It, it's hard to see because it's a bit small now, but um, I think there were actually three deer, but there's, there's that one deer that is clearly looking at me and wondering, should I run away? Is that guy going to come any closer or is he going to stay there? <laughs> and I just think it's a cute add-on to the photo. I was basically just photographing the environment and then I saw there's that deer, so I adjusted the composition slightly to the left. The left, as you can see, it turned out completely black, but I don't really mind, it's not a problem. And as you can see, Lomography 800 really pushes those greens. The green field is very green, but I'm not complaining, I really like greens in my photos, so that's fine. The photo itself isn't really that special apart from the deer, I just really appreciate the deer. Apart from that, it's fairly boring even, but yeah, I thought it'd be worth showing you. So moving on to the right photo, which was yeah the same morning, probably just minutes before or after the last photo, I saw these three trees that sort of seemed like they were together. These three trees sort of stand out because as you can see there aren't any trees next to these trees, it's just these three somehow. They got this beautiful soft, not sunlight, but the daylight from this time just before sunrise. And so we've got this beautiful gradient from the light to the shade, which is hitting these trees and that's mainly what I was photographing here. And I thought with the three trees standing like this, it just really fits nicely as a decent composition. But apart from that, a few things that just make it work better in my opinion is, for example, the leaves that are coming from the top, hanging down all the way almost into the middle of the frame, that just add some interest I suppose, because just the trees might be a bit boring, but with those leaves we get this variety of textures and shapes. And also in the foreground, uh, right on the left edge of the photograph, we've got some blurry grasses or something that just add to the sense of depth so that we have a foreground, a midground, and then the forest in the background. And the forest is, as you can see, all in the shade, and it's just the trees that are lit up. So this scene that I just found, by coincidence, really worked out nicely as a photograph. I think it's quite beautiful. Then, here are the next two photos from that session in the morning with Lomography 800. The left photo, I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can see we've got the bottom half is just the field, then we've got the horizon with two huge power poles, and in between the power poles you can see a little dot, and no that is not dust, I'll zoom in for you, you can see that is a hot air balloon, and I thought that was great. Sadly I only had a 35mm lens on the camera and no other lens with me, I would love to take this photo with at least a 50, but even better maybe an 85 or a 135mm lens, or I just could have run. Oh no, actually I couldn't have gone much closer because then the distance between the power poles would have become too big to fit them both in the photo, because what I appreciate here is that it's right in the middle, not just of the frame, but also in between the power poles which is a moment I was waiting for, so I saw the hot air balloon coming and so I got my position and just stood there and the hot air balloon was really slow and so I was just watching it slowly move into position and when I thought, okay, this is the middle, I'm pretty sure I snapped the photo and I'm glad that it worked out very nicely. Similarly, but different, on the right side, we've got this other photo of a moment. I saw this cyclist coming towards me on this path and I really liked that because it was still fairly dark. It wasn't really dark, but it wasn't really bright either. It was like right in between, blue hour kind of style. And this person had the bicycle's light turned on, which just added some interest, I suppose, because it wasn't this 
shadowy kind of creature coming towards me, it was actually a bicycle with a light shining. And so I set up this fairly simple composition. I think it's not that interesting, but there are a couple things that I can point out which I do appreciate. So what we've got here is on the left, complete darkness again, just complete black. And then we move towards the middle and we've got this beautiful path that is going far into the distance surrounded by these trees which creates this tunnel made of trees which i think is really beautiful and what i appreciate as a little detail is uh, the right edge where we can see that this is located right next to a river the river isn't really something very important in the photograph but i just think it makes it a bit more romantic i suppose because i mean it's very beautiful don't you think like this beautiful path in this tunnel of trees and that is all next to a river so I took the chance and got this photo of this cyclist coming towards me. Then, here are the last three photos from this session with the roll of Lomography 800 which I want to show you. The first photo I want to talk about is the one of the streaming river with the river slightly blurry thanks to some slow shutter speeds. The first thing that struck me when I scanned this photo and converted it is it is so saturated, so this is the experience that I at least had with Lomography 800 by now. I'm really fond of strong colours in photography and some might think something is oversaturated and I will still quite like it, so I'm quite tolerant when it comes to that. And this photo was even, at the time, maybe a bit too much for me, but now looking at it, I think it's just beautiful. I mean, this forest is just gorgeous. If you look at this, all these trees and this, these different colours from green to yellow, and I think the light played a big role here, because as mentioned, this is the pre-sunrise light, this very soft, slightly warm light. I myself was standing on a bridge that was going across this river, and therefore I could get this nice composition of being right above the river with the river going through the middle of the frame and so I thought it would work nicely as a sort of leading line and the photo worked out. Then the next photograph, the one in portrait orientation, this one is also beautiful I think. So the subject I photographed here is fairly classic, it's like this almost cliche scene of water that is still and you can see the forest behind it and you've got this perfect mirroring effect. You know, it just never gets old, it's cliche, but it just doesn't get old. There's a reason why it's cliche and why it's so popular, because it's just so beautiful. So this is my take on it, and I really like it. I understand why it is popular. The two subjects that I was looking out for in this case are firstly the stone and that little bit of grass that is right in the foreground. I think they are such a perfect addition to this photo, because if it were just the water, it would almost be a bit boring, it would feel a bit empty, just if I imagine that those things were not there, it would feel a bit empty, but I think that they are there just makes this perfect, because you've got a few different things to look at, and it almost feels like that this is the subject and everything else is actually just complementary. But I was also actually looking at that shed that is far on the other side of the river and the way that it is positioned in relation to that stone. And I think it worked out quite nicely, I think it feels very balanced. Also with the field going diagonally through the foreground, it, it all just works very nicely I think. And then lastly, I got a more detailed photograph of the rock and the grass, and as you can see, there are a couple other rocks also coming almost out of water. They're barely visible, but they're not out of water yet, and that is what I thought was so beautiful, because they are slightly diffused by the water, and it has this dreamy look. And what I really loved in this particular scene, and why I took the photo, is the mirroring effect of the trees. You can't really see the other side of the river, but you get the trees coming from the top, which is just so beautiful. And this mirroring effect, it's really no wonder that this is so popular because you have the ground that is showing the sky in this case, which actually, if you think about it, is just amazing. <laughs> I don't know why I'm only realizing this now after, I don't know, five years of doing photography. Why, I am, why am I only realizing this now that this is the reason why these are so popular. But yeah, I really appreciate it in, in uh, this example, and I like the detailed look at this rock, because I think the rock just has something really beautiful about it, just popping out of the water there, and this very calm and quiet river just has a feeling to it, if you know what I mean. It's a calming photo, peaceful, it feels, it feels peaceful. 
So let's move on to a different roll of film in a different month. This is now shot with a roll of Fuji Pro 400H, which I've been shooting a lot of lately. This was in Freilassing in December 2021, so not long ago, just a little while ago. This cold December morning was a very foggy one. I had this wonderful shoot in the early morning before the sun had risen in the thick fog, and by this time a lot of the fog had gone already as you can see, but there was still this nice haze in the distance, and so I thought why not get a photo, a nice photo of this power pole and the tree and the forest in the background. And I really like how the layering is working out here, or I don't know if layering is the right word, I just mean how you have foreground, middle ground, background, etc. It works very nicely here because we've got this zigzag motion going on from foreground being this power pole on the left, then we go over diagonally to the tree in the midground, and then we go over to the other power poles and then see the rest of the forest in the back, and, and that is the horizon basically. I don't exactly think that this photo is magnificent in any way, but you know I really like misty photos, and I think this photo just represents this very peaceful morning that I had there. Then let's continue with the last session that I want to show you. I've got another six or five photos, but all from the same day, from the same session. Again, we're shooting Lomography 800 here. This was in Freilassing, September 2021, and on the left I was I don't really know what it is, it's not really a park, it's just this random forest that has this pond inside it which is beautiful and uh, I was exploring this area, I think this was the first time that I went there, I just saw that there's this random pond in this forest on Google Maps and so I decided to explore it and so I came here and brought along the Zenit E with the roll of Lomography 800 loaded and this first photo is very interesting because I don't exactly know what happened with the light here. So you have to know this might have been the first shoot that I did with the Zenit E, so I wasn't entirely sure if this camera actually is working, but I heard the shutter working, I've seen the shutter work, I just hadn't seen the photos that come out because this was the first roll ever. And as you can see in this left photo, the lighting is a bit weird because in the middle, you've got this bright part. On the right, the photo becomes darker and darker and then just fades into pitch black. And also the top somehow gets darker for some reason. And I'm assuming that it has something to do with the shutter, but I don't really know what happened and I don't really know what I did wrong on my side and how I can prevent this effect. But in this particular case, I think the effect is actually really cool. I don't know if you will relate, but I feel like it looks a bit like it was intentional lighting, as if I would have lit it like this purposely, which is absolutely not the case. As said, it was a, a happy accident. And uh, I just feel like it really focuses the photo into the middle, but it's not this classic round darkening, which I personally don't like so much. But here, it feels more natural. I just really like it because, well, first of all, the scene is beautiful, obviously the pond with these grasses coming out at the back and then that gorgeous forest, it's a beautiful, quiet, natural scene, and just the light is what makes it interesting for me, or that extra bit of interesting, and that's therefore I really wanted to show this to you. And then on the right is one of those classic self-portraits where I just run into the distance in front of the camera, and this was me trying out the timer on the Zenit E, which was one of the main reasons I wanted a Zenit E, or actually didn't want specifically a Zenit E, I just saw it on the second-hand market and then saw that it has a timer, and so I thought, oh, this is my chance. I gotta get this camera. By the way, it cost me 10 euros. 10 euros for a functioning film camera that is built like a tank and has a self-timer. Anyway, I tried it out here, so I winded the timer and ran in front, of, in front of the camera. I have to say now, I don't really like the composition too much. Again, it's a bit too wide, it just doesn't feel well composed. But I still thought it's a nice photo to show you as one of my first tries to do this kind of a photo that I usually do digitally. Apart from that, I really like the scene. Again, we've got this tunnel. This time the cornfield and uh, the forest, and in between there is this sort of tunnel that is going on. I think I should go there again just to try this portrait again and a bit better than I did it here. 
Then let's move on to the next page. Here I have two more self-portraits. As said, this was the main intention of buying the Zenit E. And so on the left side, we've got a very, I would say, classic photo of mine. It's the kind of thing that I always do. And I think it worked out quite nicely. Something I don't like so much is that the sky is just this white negative space, which in this case isn't really working out very nicely. It doesn't feel entirely unintentional, but it's it's just this boring empty part that I don't really know what it is. Especially, let's say, compare it to the right photo where you can see the details of the sky and that it's this dramatic mixture of clouds. But overall, I think the photo turned out quite nicely. I like how this just worked out, first of all, that the timer works and the distance that I was able to gain from the camera. But apart from that, I think it's a bit boring. There's not really much to look at. That's not particularly a bad thing, but in this case I just think it didn't really work out. I can't explain it in a better way than that. I just don't feel very good about this photo. I think it, it's slightly boring. The right photo was just another attempt of a self-portrait. I had the camera really low, pointing up to the sky. I thought I'd just position myself in front of it, looking up to the sky, hoping for some cool composition and self-portrait. I think it worked out more or less. It's very dark, not as dark as I had intended. It looks far more dramatic than I had intended, but I still think overall it's actually an interesting composition. It just didn't entirely work. It sort of worked out, but not at all the way that I was actually hoping to make it work. And so yeah, I just thought it's still worth showing because it's something interesting. I, I don't think I've ever done this kind of a self-portrait from very low angle looking up with the sky in the background, but it's the kind of thing I would like to try a couple more times, especially in more of these romantic weather conditions such as at sunset or sunrise, maybe with some pink clouds. Then here is the last photo that I want to show you today. Here I am back to that place where I got the self-portrait. I think this portrait turned out great. This is the same photo that I got but as you can clearly see, what I changed here is the lens. I think this was a 135mm lens, so we've got this very compressed look, which I don't often do, but every time I do, I feel like I actually like it a lot, so maybe I should start doing it more consistently. Um, but in this case, I think it has a very pleasing effect. I love the depth that is created by the foreground being all blurry, and then we see me as the subject in the middle and it just continues far into the back and becomes blurry again and we've got this not leading line but you can really feel the tunnel and the depth created by the overhanging trees from the forest and the cornfield all just going down this path. Something that is really hard with the Zenit is the timing of course because when I do this with the Sony I've just got it on the intervalometer so it's shooting a photo every two seconds or so. In this case I wind it once, run and I'm not even entirely sure when the photo is going to be taken. I just position myself and then at one point I hear the of the shutter and I know oh okay that's it and then I decide do I do it once more or do I move on. By the way in case you're wondering how I nailed the focus here if I remember correctly, I had the camera on my tripod, but then took it off the tripod, walked to where I'm standing there, then focused onto the tripod so that I have the exact same distance, and then left my backpack there so that I knew, okay, that's where I need to run to. Then I put the camera back onto the tripod, set the timer, pressed the shutter, the timer was running, I ran to my backpack, threw it to the side into the bushes there, so somewhere in those bushes my backpack is lying, and yeah, positioned myself and hoped that this worked out, and yeah, it did. So yeah, that's how this photo was made, and that concludes the photos for today. I actually have a bunch more photos from this category, so for this video I gathered a bunch of photos, put them in one folder, and then selected a few to make this little presentation here. So I suppose I'll do a part two someday if you liked this. Please let me know if you liked it and if I should do a part two, because I've got a couple more photos and always more, of course, that are created and then forgotten for quite a while. So those photos would all fit into this format. These are the photos that I selected for today's episode. These are the ones that I wanted to start off with and show you today. I hope you enjoyed this little chat or presentation, whatever you want to call it. So that's it for this week. If you liked it, I'd appreciate a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And I'll see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.